What's up guys, it's Susie Bullock from HayGrillHay.com and I'm here to help you make better barbecue, feed the people you love, and become a backyard barbecue hero. And today I'm taking you on a patio tour. Everybody always asks, hey Susie, what smokers are you using? What grills do you have? So I'm gonna take you on a private little behind the scenes tour and show you everything that I've got, talk about the pros and cons of each, and help you make a better decision next time you're looking to purchase a new smoker or grill. Todd's gonna come along for the ride, and we're gonna be doing some sweet barbecue trivia during the video, so grab a pen and paper. Let's hang out and have a good time. All right, let's start at the beginning. This is how I got into barbecue. Pellet smoking, my friends. Todd is gonna be my Vanna. I love pellet smoking because here are some of the strengths of pellet smoking. Are you ready? Convenience, temperature control, you don't have to babysit them. They're generally pretty price friendly depending on the brand that you buy. I cook on a Camp Chef. I love the features that it offers for the price that they have and their customer service in my opinion is unbeatable. We work with Camp Chef a year at a time. They sponsor our Grill Squad which is our exclusive members only group and let's hit it with some features, Todd. Features. Features. Hopper. Pellets, wood pellets go in the hopper. I These I was are. Gonna oh, you're gonna do it, Paul? Huh? No, you go. Okay. Tell me, tell me about the features, it Todd. It has a bottle open. It's pretty sweet. It has this nice window to see that we're almost out of pellets. It has a lid and a handle. Now you go. <laughs> okay. That was lovely overview. I'll take it a little bit deeper. Uh, this has a 20 pound pellet capacity, which means it'll hold a 20 pound bag of pellets which generally for us gets us about 20 to 30 hours of smoking time, depending on the temperature, depending on what we're cooking, and depending on what the temperature is outside. That actually plays a factor into how quickly you burn through pellets. Like Todd said, it has a nice window. It's got this wide lid. I use this for sauces, carrying stuff out. All of the things, it's what really thick steel. What if we don't like steel. the flavor of the pellets in there, Sue? You can change out the pellets. There's like a pellet drop door, so you can open it, swap out the pellets super easily. And it allows you to change the variety of wood that you're using. Um, pellets come in so many different flavors, and there are so many different manufacturers of pellets that do a great job. So, we love our pellet smoker. We love that we can set it at 225 and do brisket, or that we can set it at 400 degrees and do burgers. This is our workhorse. Your chicken thighs. Chicken thighs. All the recipes on our website are super applicable to a pellet grill. This is this is the one we this is our go-to. We probably use the pellet smoker three to five nights a week. Workhorse. Because of the convenience, and we've had this for a long time, and it looks beautiful. It has some great accessories. Um, this one has the sidekick on it, the Camp Chef sidekick. It's a 30,000 BTU burner that runs on propane. So you can put a sear box, you can put a pizza oven. It makes this incredibly versatile and incredibly easy to use. Oh, are we gonna do that? We have our um, accessories set up over here. Pizza. This is the pizza oven and it just sits on top. And so if we wanted to do pizzas, like traditional Neapolitan style pizzas at a really high temperature, boom, it's all on one grill. So that's why we love our pellet smoker strengths. If there are weaknesses for a pellet smoker, I would say you have to be attached to electricity. So it's not super versatile if you want to take it camping unless you have a generator set up. It's really heavy. Another thing, it's not super portable. Once you get it in place, it's going to stay there because it weighs a lot. Um, are there any other cons to pellet smoking? It's different. Offset. It's different. It's traditional and some people say better. but Right. And something interesting that you need to know about pellet smoking is because you're not using charcoal as a base, because you're not using whole logs of hard wood, some people will report that they don't get as much of that old school barbecue flavor. Now I've turned out some of the best looking barbecue off of this thing and, and tasting. tasting and we don't have complaints but if you're somebody that prefers a stronger more forward smoke or charcoal flavor there are other options for you but I do believe that this is super versatile I think it's a great segue for people to get into barbecue we love pellet smokers we we've don't cooked use on our oven anymore no we've cooked on pellet smokers for over eight years now this is a wood fire convection oven yep and we love it okay on to the next Oh wait, we gotta do barbecue trivia. Are you ready? Oh. I have barbecue trivia. Todd's gonna be playing along with you guys and he doesn't know what the answers are. So write down your answer for barbecue trivia. <laughs> and, um, okay, ready? Garbage man. Okay. That's all right. Todd, 
What is the typical temperature range for cold smoking? A, 32 to 45 degrees Fahrenheit. B, 99 to 125 degrees Fahrenheit. C, 150 to 175 degrees Fahrenheit. Or D, 68 to 86 degrees Fahrenheit. Cold smoking. Like cheese? Cold smoking. I think it's B. Okay, B. Todd uh, thinks it's B. Write down answer. your answers, and we're gonna actually give everybody the answers at the end of the video. Okay. Boom, next. One, two, two. This is our gas grill. A lot of people who are into low and slow barbecue will scoff at a gas grill. But guess what 80% of Americans own if they own a grill? Gas. Gas is convenient. Gas heats up quickly. Gas is easy to refuel. Everywhere close to you is gonna have a place for you to refuel propane. You don't have to order like specific wood or go to a specific specialty shop to get what you need. Gas is convenient and it's there and it's accessible. Sometimes I want to cook burgers and hot dogs and I just want to turn the thing on and go. I don't want to light charcoal, you know? Yep. Um, the cool thing about these Weber Genesis series is there are a lot of accessories available that are, again, super easy to get your hands on. You can buy rotisseries, you can buy grill baskets, you can buy um, these eye grill thermometers that just attach right to it. There is an infrared burner on the side. This one does not have that. Sorry. That's just a burner burner. <laughs> yeah. There's a side burner if you want to do something in a pot, like corn, beans on the side to go along Chili. with stuff that's cooked on here. Now, we have smoked on gas grills. The first time we ever smoked anything was on a gas grill. We filled a pie tin with wood chips, put it over on the heat side, kept a turkey on the other side, and we smoked our first little turkey breast. So it's possible to make these versatile. One of the downsides of gas grilling is that you do experience flare-ups more frequently. As you're cooking at a high temperature, the fat renders, it'll drop down, and it can catch on those propane and you have a nice little grease fire. So this is something that if you are using gas grills, I recommend using two zone heat. So half of the grill is on and then you have a cool spot so that if you need to move something away from direct heat to cook it indirectly, that's the way to go. It's got a little dome thermometer on top. I like that this thermometer is on the front of the grill instead of on the top. It gives you a more accurate reading on your food that's closest to the grill grate level. You'll know what temperature it is. We like our gas grill. We keep it up top because we do use it pretty frequently. Okay, wait, before we move on to the next one, Todd, it's time for another trivia question. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Barbecue trivia, Todd. How old do you need to be to judge in a KCBS barbecue competition? A, 12, B, 21, C, 16, or D, 18? Which one was 21? B. B. Okay, noted. Write down your answers. We'll reveal them all at the end. Because don't you have to drink beer with barbecue and then a rule? Okay. That's a good way to surmise an answer, Todd. <clears throat> all right. Bah, 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 bah. This is um, Todd's little brother that he never knew he wanted, I believe was the phrase you said when we first opened this. Or needed or needed. <laughs> uh, this is a Kamado style cooker. We have a Coyote brand. They sent this to us a couple years ago. You might be more familiar with Big Green Egg, Kamado Joe's. There are several Vision, Primo, um, Komodo's. Those are some of the more popular types of ceramic cookers. Komodo Dragon? Yeah, so this is a charcoal based grill. It has vents on the bottom, vents on the top. That's how you control your airflow and your temperature and it's heavy. Very heavy. Very, very heavy. As you can see, there's over an inch of ceramic. And that is what keeps in the heat, it keeps in the temperature. What that does is allow you to low and slow cook and smoke meats over a long period of time while keeping charcoal. Some of the pros is that these maintain moisture incredibly well. So your, your meat's gonna come out juicy, it's gonna be beautiful. We don't use this one a lot because for us it takes a little bit of time to get the temperature right, to get it up to temperature, and then get it to hold temperature. But we really like doing um, my poor man's burnt ends. It's a chuck roast recipe on this guy because it's not smoking for super long, so it can take on that heavier, thicker charcoal wood flavor and it gives you a more traditional barbecue 
flavor and experience. We like this guy. I think the cons on these are they're pretty pricey. If you have the ceramic brake, sometimes it's just age. Sometimes if you heat it up or cool it down too quickly, you can crack the ceramic. They're expensive to replace. A lot of times accessories are a little bit costly and maintenance on them can be a little bit high, but people absolutely love these. The pros of these is that it's not electric. You don't need to plug it in anywhere. There's no noise and it's a lot less babysitting than a traditional offset because it retains the heat so well. And people just love these ceramic style cookers. Love them, love them. Also, I struggled getting just three racks of ribs on here one time, like they were yeah. over the edge. Sometimes size is a, down, a downer on these because they don't have as much real space. But there are accessories, there's rib racks, there's things that you can kind of optimize the space as much as you can. But that's something to consider if you like to cook a lot at once, you'll either need to size up and get a really, really big one that's really, really heavy. It takes us multiple people to move this guy. I know, it's kind yeah. of fun. That's a pro. Da, 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 da. But it does, it takes, anytime we want to move this, it requires a crew. But we like it. You're about ready to move it again, aren't you? Uh -huh. Up and down and up and down. I have made him haul it up and down the stairs a lot. Okay, on to the next. Oh wait, barbecue trivia. Barbecue trivia, Todd. Is it about this? Okay, nope. Oh. Which city is the self-proclaimed barbecue capital of the world? Is the it Utah. A, Lexington, North Carolina, B, Memphis, Tennessee, C, Austin, Texas, or D, Kansas City, Missouri? D. Okay. Todd believes it is D. Again, answers coming at the end. Woo! I claim it's Lehigh, Utah, though. All right, guys. This, I don't know if it is a grill or not. It's a giant griddle. It's my second bed. <laughs> this is where Todd takes naps when he's in trouble. He spends, instead of on the couch, he comes and sleeps on the flat top, right? He does not sleep on the flat top. That's never happened. Uh, this guy is again from Camp Chef. As we've stated, we like Camp Chef. This is a flat top griddle. It is a steel top and it's beautiful. We do 4th of July breakfasts on here. When we have team meetings, we cook for our team on here. Gas powered, propane, click, click, turn it on, gets up to temperature quickly. Um, this one's just fun. You can do everything on here. Hibachi, burritos, Philly cheesesteaks, Philly cheese carne asada, anything that you like, oh, smash burgers, mm -hmm. like those crispy edge smash burgers. It gets, hot. It gets really, really hot. The only downside to this, I think, is just keeping it covered and keeping it clean. We have to keep it really well seasoned and every time we cook on it, we gotta scrape it, we gotta keep it covered. So it's a little bit high maintenance, but other than that, oh. it's just like a workhorse and a gem and a great addition to the arsenal. I don't think I could own just a flat top. I would need something that's wood fired. I would need that outdoor cooking experience. Um, but this is a great little tool to have in the arsenal that I really, really like. Yep. Trivia. Trivia! I remember. I, Todd likes this game. Okay, ready? Um, when is the biggest holiday for barbecue in the United States? Like, when are the most people having a barbecue in the US? A, Memorial Day, B, Labor Day, C, Father's Day, or D, the 4th of July? Or E, Todd's birthday in the whole United States. That's the most popular day for a barbecue, it's March 11th. Yes. Uh, okay, so that wasn't an option. D. Fourth of July? Okay, noted. Dun, 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 the Ginger dun. Ninja. The Ginger Ninja. You guys, this was my first non-gas or non-pellet grill. This one right here, and I love her and she has cooked so many things for me. This is a classic Weber kettle. We have the performer version, so it's on the stand. It has the little accessories. It's got charcoal storage, but essential functions are exactly the same as any Weber kettle that you can get from the single standalone version. I like this one. I, we also use this one a lot. I would say when we're not cooking on the pellet smoker, this is our number two most used, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the cool thing about Weber's is that they have been around for so long. There are a ton of accessories available. There are a ton of resources available. I think one of the pros is that it's just versatile. You can use this as a smoker. You can use this as a hot and fast grill. When you place your charcoal, you can do it on half the grill, leave the other half without charcoal. So you get that two zone cooking. So you can do 
the smoking on one side, you can do the low temperature cooking on one side, and then you can sear it really fast over charcoal on the other side. And you can buy really cool accessories, like Todd got me this custom grill grate for Christmas. And it's just a circle grill grate with my logo on the matches your shirt. Oh, yeah, that's cute. Um, and we love charcoal. You can cook with briquettes. You can cook lump. with lump charcoal. And with chunks. Yeah, and we just love it. It's got the ash dump at the bottom and you can control the temperature with venting at the bottom and venting at the top so you get the right kind of airflow. And we just love it. I, my daughter's first grill actually was a charcoal grill because I wanted her to really kind of like learn to build a fire and learn to manage heat. I think that's super important. So this is a great way to go and we like it. Barbecue trivia. Cons. Oh, cons. Okay, let's talk cons about a kettle. Cons about the kettle is sometimes regulating temperature can be tough. Whether you're using briquettes or whether you're using lump plays a lot into what temperatures you're gonna be getting and how quickly you burn through fuel. Um, purchasing fuel, depending on the brand you use and where you get it from, can occasionally be pretty pricey. I know a lot of people will stock up when they see charcoal on sale because keeping yourself in stock can be a little bit expensive. Um, temperature control for smoking, if you wanna go lower at 225, you're gonna be babysitting it all day long. You're not gonna be able to walk away. You're gonna be needing to make sure that the vents are right. Adding coals. You need to add coals as cold burn coals. through. Right. Um, so yeah, we do like smoking on this, but it's definitely something that requires a lot more attention. For us, we use this mostly hot and fast grilling. People have won barbecue competitions using this. Though. Yes, it's super doable. It just, just requires some a attention. Lot a lot of love. And learning. Love and, and learning. learning. Like, uh, a, like a marriage. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't I didn't even know where to go with that. Um I have a Weber barbecue trivia question actually. Are you ready? Oh dear. What was the year the original Weber grill was invented? A 1949, B 1952, so too C close. Too close. 1933, oh. or D 1969? D 1969. <laughs> no. <laughs> you just picked a letter. Oh. 1949, 1952, 1933, or 1969? Well, it's 52 or 49. Okay, A or B? B. Okay. <laughs> Good guess, Todd. We're gonna move on to the next grill. We gotta go downstairs though, cause we obviously have filled- we ran out of room. We ran out of room up here, so we had to start spreading them in other places in our yard. We got two left, let's go. Welcome to our porch deck. Our porch deck. Porch deck? deck? Nope, patio, what is this shed called? Deck. Shed deck. This is the deck of our shed. This is where we keep this grill. So this is our Oklahoma Joe offset, traditional old school, classic barbecue experience, right? Yep. Firebox on this side, chimney on this side. So the heat and the smoke pulls, there's a draw that comes through the firebox, pulls the smoke and the heat through the cooking chamber, out the vent. So you place all of your delicious smoked meats, inside over here over here or closer here if you want a higher temperature and it draws the smoke and the temperature across the meat creating that like that smells good it does that barbecue old school nice dark bark all of the things that you associate with like central texas barbecue or southern southern american barbecue is kind of this offset experience we like to use charcoal as a base for temperature and then we add wood chunks or logs to keep the heat and the smoke rolling throughout the cook. So pros of this guy, Todd. Flavor. Flavor, flavor, flavor. Color. Mm -hmm. We generally get really dark, nice, beautiful bark and a great smoke ring when we're cooking on the Oklahoma Joe. Um, cons. Temperature control. <laughs> temperature control again. So we bought this unit straight from a big box store, assembled it and put it together. This is something that if you really wanna do a lot of low and slow cooking on it, there are some easy modifications that you can make in terms of putting on 
heat resistant tape to kind of block the air from escaping. I think that's the biggest issue we've had is that smoke and heat just gets through the door even when it's sealed. I don't think it's super well insulated in the firebox. And so sometimes just managing those temperatures can be a little bit difficult, but once you really dial in on keeping your vents the right way, knowing when to add poles, it takes practice, but once you really like get to it, I mean, this might be our favorite, like if we're gonna slow it down on a weekend and do beef ribs or brisket, we like it on the OK Joe. Yep, I agree. Okay, trivia? Trivia! It's a song I just wrote. <laughs> okay, which of these techniques involves applying a dry high heat to the top or bottom of food? Smoking, that's A. A is smoking. B is roasting. C is braising. Or D is grilling. A dry high heat to the bottom side of the to meat? To the top or bottom side of the meat, yeah. It's like the heat's above or below whatever you're cooking. Smoking, roasting, braising, or grilling? Roasting. B? B. All right. Well, that was our last trivia question. Oh. We have one more smoker that we're gonna talk about and then we're gonna reveal all the answers. Do, do, do. Now this is our patio. Like I said, we just started having to distribute all of our smokers everywhere around the yard. So this is our pit barrel cooker. These have really been rising in popularity in the last couple years. Pros, super affordable. Like I think one of the more affordable smokers that you can get on the market. Pros, it cooks at a higher temperature. So these usually run 275 to 325, would you say? Uh, yeah, 275 to 350. Okay, and they cook quicker. Yeah. And so you can get that barbecue flavor, but because it kind of like spins the heat inside in this convection-y type way, it cooks really quickly. Uh, lid self-explanatory. There's rebar inside so you can hang your meat on hooks so that you kind of get that old school like smokehouse experience which is really exciting. Charcoal goes in the bottom for your heat and your fuel source. They and then, also have grates that you can set in there. There are grates that you can set in there. So if you want to grill, if you want to, instead of hanging something like a brisket or like a turkey, you can set it on the grill grates on top. We, hit, we tend to hang them. The grill grates, as you can see, are still practically new. Um, Out of the pros, the owners of this company are fantastic. Yeah, we love the pit barrel cooker. They're good friends of ours, and we like what they do and what they stand for. Noah and Amber. Noah and Amber are great. They support their veterans. He is, yes. He's a veteran, and we love people that are working their butts off with small family businesses. So we love our pit barrel cooker. I would say this is Todd's go-to. I love it. If he's gonna fire up a smoker and cook something that he wants, like he's just taking the time to do it, it's gonna be on the pit barrel. We're taking our youth group camping this week and I'm taking that and cooking them six racks of ribs. They yep. won't even know what hit them. Another pro is again, no electricity. So this one's super versatile if you wanna take it on the road, if you wanna take it camping, if you wanna take it with you somewhere not home. It's super light. It's easy to get around and there's no electricity. So that's why Todd gets to take this one on the road and go camping this week. Hope I don't ruin him. <laughs> He'll do great. Cons on this one is you have to learn a little bit of a new technique. Uh, if you're not used to cooking at a higher temperature, you have to be mindful of your cook times. It's drastically gonna change how long your food is gonna be on the smoker. Thank you, baby. <laughs> uh, so that's something to keep in mind. Are there any other cons with this guy? Qual I, I would say capacity is probably a limiting factor. You can't fit a ton on here. I mean, we've done multiple racks of ribs because you can hang about as much as you can fit in there. But you need to keep in mind, the more you put in there at a lower temperature, it's gonna lower the overall temperature of your cook. So you just have to make tweaks and adjustments, but I feel like this one's pretty fairly easy to manage in terms of temperature and because it cooks quicker you're not going to be up all night long babysitting you can get things done a little bit last faster. time we just laid in the grass right here and i fell asleep out, took a nap um and cooked some ribs a con is that the ribs like the bot you'll lose the bottom two or three ribs because it almost touches the fire yeah. basically so you got to split them and do half racks of ribs or cook things that you can keep elevated enough above the fire so you don't have that direct heat grilling experience happening. 
keep them up and elevated and then you get more of that convection smoker, you know, circulating heat type of a thing. Yep. And then we have a fire pit right here. It's just a propane little fire. We should have had it all going. We should have had it going. We do s'mores on here with our kids all the time. We like the gas, it's super convenient. But we don't cook much on here other than marshmallows. No. But they're good marshmallows. Yes. <laughs> Does that complete our patio tour? I think so. You guys, I let's count. Pellet, gas, ceramic, flat top, charcoal, offset, barrel, seven, marshmallows if you can't the, the gas fire pit. <laughs> um, th these are our standard that we have on hand all of the time. Sometimes the models will change based on if we get something new or something that we're excited about. But these are the ones that we always have on hand. So we could technically cook on a different grill every day of the week if we wanted to. And a lot of times we do. We like to switch them out. We like to use each product and really highlight the strength of that particular grill when we're cooking something on there. You can use pretty much all of these to do everything that every other grill does but we really do feel like each of them have their strengths, each of them have some drawbacks, and so we keep that in mind. And for you guys, if you're looking to purchase a grill, I would say write down what your highest priorities are. Are you somebody that likes to cook hot and fast mostly during the week? Are you somebody that's gonna slow it down and do barbecue every single weekend? Cause that will indicate what type of grill you should buy. And most importantly, keep your budget in mind. Don't blow your budget just because you feel like you need the fanciest thing the most expensive brand name, whatever the case may be. Be smart about your budget. You can always start small, sell it on Craigslist if you need to and use that money to upgrade later if you find something that really speaks to you and that you love. So be smart with your budget, be real about what you're gonna use it for and you'll find something that you love that you can feed your family with and that you can improve on your own barbecue at home. And that's the biggest deal to us. We have recipes on our site and we don't say what grill it has to be used on because we believe that whatever grill you have at home is the grill that you should be using to feed your family. Yep. Marshmallow recipe coming soon. Marshmallow. <laughs> if you have a gas fire pit, we can hook you up with some wicked s'mores. Yes. Todd's secret to the best s'mores is the Reese's spread, by the way. Shh, All right. Secret. <laughs> Do you guys want to know answers to trivia? Pull out your pads and paper. Thanks for watching all the way to the end, you guys. I'm gonna Here's, go buy a new smoker. Uh, what are you gonna get? Big one. A big one? Yep. Todd wants a trailer. He wants a massive offset on a trailer. So that might be grill number eight. Yeah. Okay, um, typical temperature range for cold smoking. 68 to 86 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh. Cold smoking, you don't want cooking I, that tricked me to actually happen. The end, so I, I know, thinking, sorry. That's, oh. I might have asked these out of order. How old do you need to be to judge in a KCBS competition? The answer is C, 16 years old. Dang it. Self-proclaimed barbecue capital of the world is Lexington, North Carolina. That's what they say. I think it's every city. They say that <laughs> we are the self-proclaimed barbecue of the world. Mo the busiest holiday for barbecue in the United States. Fourth like of July. Fourth of July. I um, got one right. You got one right. Which technique involves dry high heat to the top or bottom of the food? It is D, grilling. grilling. Roasting is when there's an even heat on all sides of the food. Mm. Sorry, oh, you were close. Um, original Weber grill was invented in B, 1952. Is that what I said? No, you said 1949. Mm. You were really close they're though. They're too close. I know, I did put those two It needs two to be close. like 2020, 1952, the original, 1892. The original Weber grill was invented in 2020? Yes. Well, no, then it would be, <laughs> I'd have some, you can't put 52 and 49 right together. That's I not hope fair. you guys loved our barbecue trivia. Sorry if I gave you the answers out I of order. I hate multiple choice exams. He really does, that's why I made him do it. If you guys ever have questions about what type of grill you should get or what would best suit you at home, leave it in the comments. We'll have a conversation about it because we want you to make the best barbecue you can for the people that you love and be a backyard barbecue hero. Like me. Like me. And then once you get an awesome smoker, head to heygrillhay.com and get all the recipes you need. Like marshmallows over the fire. I don't have a recipe for that. <laughs>